Hello everyone. Welcome to the Crystal E Recap channel, and now you're going to hear a short review of the movie, The Shape of Water. In 1962, during the Cold War, there was an aerospace research center in Baltimore, a secret government laboratory. Elisa Esposito works there as a janitor. She lives in a tiny apartment right above the movie theater. Elisa's life is a routine, every day is similar to the last. Since childhood, Elisa has had scars on her neck and has always wondered where they came from. Her neighbor Giles, a middle-aged painter, is one of Elisa's closest friends. The other neighbors treat her relatively well because she is a polite and friendly woman. She takes the bus to work and when she arrives, her favorite colleague Zelda meets her. She always stands up for her friend when other colleagues try to insult or intimidate Eliza. They are both responsible for keeping the office and other areas clean. Their job is to go around the offices and rooms used by senior managers. During one of the work shifts, one of the managers announces that a new and very valuable object captured in South America has been brought to the research center. Accompanied by Richard Strickland, the project manager, a container of liquid is brought into the building. As Elisa approaches the container, something from inside hits it, attracting everyone's attention. Frightened, the cleaner's friends leave the room and get to work. While cleaning the men's room, Eliza and Zelda meet Colonel Strickland, who is very unfriendly. After a while, the cleaners hear a scream from the room where the container is located. Strickland comes out into the hallway without two fingers on his left hand, forcing the guards to run to his aid. The cleaners are ordered to quickly clean the room of blood. As Eliza pours a bucket of water on the floor, Colonel Strickland's two missing fingers appear. Eliza carefully places them in a bag to send to the hospital. She approaches the container and discovers that the object is an amphibian man. Hypnotized by the creature, Eliza returns to the room the next day. To see the amphibian man again, she gently taps on the container, but the object seems to have moved to a small pool standing nearby. She tries to get its attention and offers it a boiled egg. In the following days, Eliza regularly sneaks into the room and feeds him boiled eggs. She even teaches him how to use sign language and plays music for him. Now that she has met the amphibian man, she feels much happier. Eliza dances in front of the container, and at this time, Dr. Robert Hofstetler, a Russian spy, sees Eliza forming a close bond with the amphibian man. He reports this to his Soviet handlers, saying that this creature is intelligent and can communicate. Hofstetler's superiors ignore this and order him to kill it so that the Americans cannot continue their scientific research. During one of Eliza's meetings with the amphibian man, she saw that he was chained to a small platform. Strickland brutally abuses him. Meanwhile, Strickland's boss, General Hoyt, wants to take the object for further research in space technology. Strickland manages to convince Hoyt that they should perform the operation on a living creature. Eliza overhears their conversation and becomes very upset. She asks Giles to help free the creature. She knows for sure that if she does nothing, the amphibian man will die. Eliza continues to insist, and finally Giles agrees to help her. Later, Hofstetler meets with his bosses again. They hand him syringes and vials of poisonous liquid to kill the amphibian man. Hofstetler is forced to carry out the order. Meanwhile, Eliza and Giles develop an escape plan for the amphibian man. He uses his skills as an artist to make an inscription on the van and a fake ID for himself. In the lab, Eliza becomes the object of Strickland's attention. He deliberately spills his glass of water and calls for her to clean the office. He picks on Eliza and she leaves. Hofstetler prepares the poison and Elisa begins to put her plan into action, turning the CCTV cameras away. At the office, Hofstetler learns about Elisa's plan and decides to help her. He goes to the room with the object. He gives her the keys to remove the chain from the amphibian man. When Zelda leaves work, she senses that Eliza is up to something and decides to find her. Eliza secretly stuffs the amphibian man into a laundry cart and drives him down the hallway, while Giles drives to the agreed-upon location. He tries to drive through the building, but fails. Meanwhile, Zelda learns of Eliza's plan. Hofstetler cuts off the power with an explosive device and stabs a syringe of poison into the neck of the guard who stopped Giles at the entrance. They successfully load the amphibious man into a van and drive away. At the same time, Strickland and the guards rush for the exit, but they don't make it. This drives him to despair and rage. Eliza, Giles, and the amphibian man arrive safely at her apartment. They immerse him in a bath of water and chemicals that Hofstetler brought with him to keep the amazing creature healthy. 
After a while, the amphibian man feels better after being out of the water for a while. In a few days, when it rains, Eliza plans to release him into the nearest canal, which will fill with water and provide easy access to the ocean. Back at the lab, Strickland and his team have already figured out how the thieves managed to escape and steal their object. When Elisa and Zelda come to work the next evening, Strickland interrogates them, but doubts they did it. He doesn't think the two women could have successfully pulled off a theft in a high-security government lab. At this time, Giles falls asleep in the apartment, watching the amphibian man. The creature gets out of the bathtub and eats one of the cats in the apartment. After that, it runs out of the apartment, scratching the waking artist's arm. Eventually, Eliza finds him in the downstairs movie theater and brings him back to her house. Upon returning, the amphibious man places his hands on Giles' head and his wound. One night, Eliza can't sleep. She goes to check on the amphibian man who is in her bathroom. She hesitantly undresses and gets into the bathtub. For the first time in her life, Eliza feels connected to someone. The love she so desperately craves is now present in her life. She is happy to have found a new meaning to existence. Meanwhile, Hofstetler is at his home and is visited by his Russian bosses. Sensing danger, he hides the knife in his sleeve, but nothing happens, and they leave. One morning, Giles wakes up to find that hair has started to grow on his head. He also notices that the cut on his arm is completely healed. At this time, Eliza and the amphibian man become very close. She even floods the bathroom so they can swim together. This causes water to leak throughout the house. Back at the lab, the general tells Strickland that he has 36 hours to return their subject to base, or his career and life will be over. One morning, Eliza returns home and realizes that the amphibious man is getting weaker every day. She decides that it's time to let him go, but she's not ready to part with him. Eliza can't even imagine a world where they could be together. In this imaginary world, music fills the air. She can sing, and the love of her life dances with her. Meanwhile, one of Hofstetler's bosses is shooting at him, but Strickland waits for the right moment and kills both bosses with a pistol. Strickland tortures the barely alive scientist to get information about the creature and finds out that it was the janitors who managed to deceive him and free the amphibian man. He goes to Zelda's house to interrogate her and her husband. Strickland starts acting like a maniac, desperate to find the amphibian man. Out of fear, Zelda's husband confesses that the creature is with Eliza. Zelda scolds her husband and then calls Eliza to warn her. Strickland, alarmed, goes to search the cleaning lady's apartment. He arrives too late and sees a calendar showing when the amphibian man is to be released. Strickland runs to the canal, knocks Giles down, and shoots the amphibian man and Eliza. Resigned to their fate, the lovers hold hands. At this time, Giles manages to get up and knock Strickland down. Suddenly, the amphibious man gets up and heals his bullet wounds. Strickland is amazed and calls the amphibian man a god. When the police arrive, the amphibious man jumps into the water with Eliza in his arms, and Zelda and Giles watch them go, silently saying goodbye. The amphibious man kisses Eliza underwater and touches the scar on her neck. The creature heals her underwater and helps her start breathing through the gills on her neck, which were never scars. They stay underwater, in love and happy to be together. This is the end of the movie. That's all for today. Subscribe and like if you want more videos like this.